want to talk about the wire resistance, right? The wire resistance. Um, what is a wire resistance? So you will always see something called sheet resistance, but let's start with what is the real resistance, right? This one, I think you understand, right? Already, if not, you need to memorize. What is the resistance of wire? Wire. Rho is the resistivity, right? It's material dependence. Matheson's rule. Hmm? Say again. It's dependent on Matheson's rule, I think, the resistivity. Yeah, it depends on Matheson, Matheson's rule if you think about the carrier scattering. Uh, but, but what, okay, so, but what I'm talking about is the material property, the resistivity of a material is constant, right? And then you multiply by the length divided by the area, that is the resistance, right? So this is from here to here, we ask about what is the resistance along this wire. It is equal to the rho times L divided by W. Is this okay? Yes, professor. Great. Now, that area is HW, right? Now, as a circuit designer, you have no control, right? Circuit designer, no control on which two parameter. You cannot control rho, you cannot control H. You are only the guy doing the so-called layout. You only control the W and L. That's why we will group them together. We come up with something called R square equal to rho divided by H. This is the technology. If you look at all the technology, when you do a design, they will tell you what is the sheet resistance of their technology for poly one, for metal one, for metal two. You know the sheet resistance, then you use it to calculate the resistance, total resistance. Right, for example, right? And it's important to you because there's no control. If I have a wire like this, just give you some cases. Okay, so what is, how many sheet resistance do I have? Right, it, it has three units, so it has a three R square. Right, because it's very long. How about this one? How many sheet resistance do I have? Anyone? If I draw a six, one, six R squared, okay. So you know that this nine is six, three, two times more resistive than the other, right? Now I draw something like this, right? Assume every square is the same. I did not draw it well. How many, what is the sheet resistance of this one? Twelve. Say again. Twelve. Twelve. Someone say 12, is it 12? Do I get higher resistance by adding another row next to it? No, you didn't increase the length. I did not increase the length and I actually increased the width. So what, how many sheet resistance do I have? Three. Three. How do I get it? This is equal to row square times three divided by one. This is equal to rho r square times six divided by one. And this one will be equals to r square times six divided by two equal to three r square, right? So the total resistance, right? Total resistance is just equal to number of square in the length direction 
divided by number of square in the width direction times r square. So this is very useful. You just use this to design your circuit by looking at the uh, shear resistance. I think probably it's easy for you, but this is a language you speak every day when you design the circuit. That's why you need to make sure you understand. Uh, any question about the shear resistance? Okay, and the reason we can abstract to this just because we cannot control H, we cannot control resistivity, we lump it into R square. And the data sheet is going to tell us the design rule, not design rule, uh, I forgot the exact name, right? You will tell metal one, metal two, up to metal 10, what are the resistance per square, okay? So here shows the resistivity and sheet resistance. Resistivity is material dependence, right? You see that copper is the best, except silver. But why don't we use silver? Very simple, right? Because silver is very expensive, right? We are not going to spend so much money just to get a little bit improved in resistivity. That's why you see from aluminum, we increase uh, by 60 or 80% right, of the conductance. But in a process, you get a fabrication process. They say that, okay, my P-well diffusion has a sheet resistance of 1,000 ohm per square. Okay. Do you need to know how deep the P-well is? You don't have to. You just say that you lay out your P-well, it is 1,000 ohm per square, right? P plus N plus diffusion is 50 ohm per square. P plus N plus with silicide is three ohm square. Polysilicon is this, and then this aluminum is this, right? What is silicide, by the way? If you don't know, it's just that you have silicon, and of course silicon has higher resistivity. You add some metal to it, and then you let it, for example, uh, let's say you use cobble, and then react. Then you have something like this cobalt silica. And this is actually metallic. And it has fairly low resistivity, right? Three to five compared to silicon. Right? So, so as a circuit designer, I think you need to know about this also. Any questions about sheet resistance and resistivity? The two different concepts. If no, then let's move on. Uh, when you deal with the resistance, right? Uh, you, you want to select some uh, technology with good scaling and also use interconnect material like copper and silicide and also reduce the FH wire length. Then you can reduce the resistance when you design the circuit, right? Do not try to have a very long wire. Last time I showed you for distributor one, the, do you remember? These are parts of the exam, right? Yeah, included in the, the study material, right? How does the uh, length, how does the resistance go up with the length of a wire? Do you remember? For a lump, forgot? No one remember? Rho times L over W. Last time I talked about, not, not, not about this, but I assume you already know what is the resistance per unit length and also the capacitance per unit length, right? How does the total, so not resistance, I'm sorry, how about the delay? How, how does the delay change? So I asked the wrong question. How does the delay? Oh, one, one over RC. One for LC, yeah, but but how does it go up with R? Uh, with L, with the length. L squared by two. L squared. Yeah. So this is important, right? So you, you make it long, your delay will just 
increase quadratically, right? So I hope you maybe I did not ask the question right. First, I say something wrong. Second, maybe I did not ask the question right. But this is something I hope you can take it. I, I, I'm pretty sure if someone really want to interview you, this is something you need to know as a circuit designer. Okay. So uh, we can also reduce the uh, sheet, re uh, sheet resistance, right? What do we do? I just told you we can use silicide instead of just polysilicon. We add a metal and let them react. And then we will uh, uh, become eight times to 10 times better resistance. And here is what you show it. And besides silicide, later in 45 nanometer, we just replace the whole thing by metal. So now the gate is very conductive. Right. For the project you are going to use is 45 nanometer technology. I think it's a metal gate. So the poly is pretty resistive, uh, pretty conductive, but it's not as good as the metal one. Okay. And of course, uh, there's some long ideality in the